It's um some time. Hmm. Ah. Wow. Hmm. Humans have already created a huge garbage patch in the Pacific Ocean. Hmm. How big is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch? Hmm. It can't be bigger than me. Oh, you're hmm. unbelievable. Huh? Every year, huh? we dump around 8 million tons of plastic waste in the oceans. Holy moly! Huh? Hmm. Now, since plastic doesn't degrade easily, whew, it keeps floating in the oceans for hundreds of years. Oh. Over time, strong winds and natural ocean currents cause this plastic to gather in five massive garbage patches. Hmm. The biggest garbage patch of them all is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, or GPGP. It is in the Pacific Ocean between Hawaii and California. Hmm. Huh? Huh? Hmm. According to estimations, huh? nearly 1.8 trillion plastic pieces are floating in the GPGP. Which weigh about 90,000 tons. Oh. Also, some people say that the GPGP is twice the size of Texas. Hmm. Phew. Hmm. Environmentalists are actively trying to develop alternatives for plastic. <laughs> we should also contribute and reduce its use. Umsum is going to entertain you with his 15 silly dance moves. Watch one move after every topic and give it a super cool name in the comments section below. Topic: Latent heat of vaporization. Why does steam cause more severe burns than boiling water? Huh? It is because steam is jealous of boiling water. No. Huh? It is because of latent heat of vaporization. Latent heat of vaporization is the amount of heat energy required to change a unit mass of liquid into vapor at atmospheric pressure at its boiling point. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Trust me. Everything just went over my head. All right. I'll explain <laughs> it to you. Boiling water contains only a specific amount of heat energy required for it to boil. Huh? <laughs> However, as steam is formed from boiling water, it contains oh. the heat energy of boiling water, along with the latent heat of vaporization. Hmm. Hence, as steam has more heat energy, it can cause more severe burns than boiling <laughs> water. <laughs> Topic: Properties of a liquid. Why is a huh? diver able to cut through water in a swimming pool? Ha! Simple. Because I taught him. No. This is because of intermolecular force. Huh? Intermolecular force is the force of attraction present in between the molecules of solids, liquids, <laughs> or gases. Now, the intermolecular forces in liquids are not very strong. Boo! This means I'm the strongest of all. Oh, please listen. Oh. Since the intermolecular forces are not strong, hmm. the molecules of a liquid are loosely <laughs> packed and they have empty spaces in between them. Hmm. As a result, the molecules can be displaced from their original position. <laughs> Hence, when a diver jumps into water, its molecules get displaced from their original position huh? and the diver is able to cut through the water. <laughs> Topic: Myopia. What causes nearsightedness? Excess staring at junk food. No. When light from an object enters our eyes, our eye lens bends it such that the image is formed on the retina. However, in some people, this image is formed before the retina. Such defect is called nearsightedness or myopia. 
a person with myopia cannot see distant objects clearly. Mm. But why? Wait, I'll explain. Mm. To focus image of a distant object on the retina, our eye lens becomes thin. However, in people with myopia, the lens cannot become adequately mm. thin, thus forming image before the retina and making it difficult to mm. see. Moreover, when the eyeball is elongated more than normal, the distance between the lens and the retina increases resulting in the formation of image before the retina, thus causing difficulty in seeing the distant object. <laughs>topic caffeine how does coffee keep you awake by throwing an overnight party nah huh? when we perform our daily activities like thinking and playing a byproduct called adenosine is produced adenosine slows down the brain activity but how in our brain there are adenosine receptors which are perfectly molded for this adenosine hmm. when the adenosine binds to these receptors it activates them causing to slow down the brain activity and thus making us feel sleepy. Huh? However, drinking coffee keeps us awake and we don't feel sleepy. This is because coffee contains a drug called caffeine, which after digestion reaches our brain. Caffeine is structurally similar to adenosine. Being similar, caffeine binds to the adenosine receptors and thus blocks the adenosine <laughs> from binding. Hence, as adenosine does not bind, <laughs> our receptors don't slow the brain activity. As a result, we remain awake. <laughs> Topic, paper cuts. Why do paper huh? cuts hurt so much? It is because paper hates us. No, huh? we use our fingers and hands to sense our surroundings. <laughs> <laughs> Hence, they have more number of nociceptors than any other parts of our body. Hmm. Nociceptors are pain receptors that respond to change in pressure, oh, temperature, yeah. etc. Now, huh? the edges of the paper are not smooth but are rough or jagged. Oh, they're like a saw. Absolutely. <laughs> Hence, sometimes when we rub our hands or especially fingertips against the edges, <laughs> it cuts them like a saw, activating the nociceptors. Now, as there are more nociceptors on our hands, we feel more pain. In addition to this, the paper cut might also have fragments of paper containing chemicals which may oh. irritate the skin and thus increase the pain. <laughs> Topic, pins and needles. Why do limbs fall asleep? Because they're tired. <sighs> nah. Huh? It basically happens because of nerves. Through nerves, our brain communicates with our limbs. Wow, nerves are so amazing. Yep. However, when we cross our legs or sleep on an arm for very long, we apply pressure causing the nerve pathways in its surrounding arteries to squeeze. Oh. Hence, the nerves do not work properly and the arteries cannot supply required nutrients to the nerves. As a result, the signals sent by our brain do not reach the limb. Thus, we cannot move it. So, hmm. we say that our limb has fallen asleep. Also, in some situations, some of these squeezed nerves stop oh. sending signals, while some fire <laughs> hyperactively. This gives us the sensation of pins and needles. <laughs> What is color blindness? <laughs> a color festival. <laughs> no, huh? color blindness or color deficiency is a vision problem. <laughs> now, our eyes have light sensitive cells called rods and cones. <laughs> Can I put ice cream on these cones? <laughs> oh, you are just unbelievable. <laughs> rods are responsible for black and white oh. vision. They do not detect color, whereas cones detect color. There are three types of cones. One cone perceives oh. red light, another perceives green, and the third perceives blue. Together, these cones help oh. us to see the whole spectrum of colors. Now, in some cases, 
When one or more types of cones do not work properly, it causes oh. color blindness. <laughs> People with such deficiency have difficulty in distinguishing between certain colors or shades. For example, in red-green color blindness, oh. the apple tree may appear like this. <laughs>
This is because when we are hungry, mm. our digestive system starts preparing for the next meal. Hence, it clears the remains of last meal, causing more muscle oh. contraction, thus producing more growling sounds. <laughs> Why do pop rocks pop? Because huh? they have springs in their legs. <laughs> nah. Pop rocks are tiny candy crystals. Candies are usually made using sugar, water, corn syrup, various flavorings, etc. Initially, all these ingredients are mixed together. The resulting solution is heated until most of the water boils oh. off and we are left with a thick, sticky syrup. Usually, this syrup is poured in molds and allowed to cool and harden to make candies. However, to make pop rocks, highly pressurized carbon dioxide gas is added to the syrup and then it is cooled to subsequently form a hard candy. This results in the formation of small bubbles of pressurized carbon dioxide oh. trapped inside the candy. Now, when we put this candy in our mouth, our saliva dissolves the candy. As a result, the highly pressurized carbon dioxide escapes from the bubbles with a pop. Hmm. How do nails grow? A nail huh? consists of many different parts. The visible part of the nail is called nail plate. <laughs> nail plate lies on the nail bed. Can I sleep on that bed? Oh, just listen. Oh. Matrix is the area where nail growth originates. It lies below the skin. Matrix has specialized cells which keep dividing and creating nail cells. The nail cells grow and produce a hard protein called keratin. Then, these keratin-filled cells are pushed forward as more new cells oh. are formed behind them. Eventually, the keratin-filled cells die and flatten to form the nail plate. The hard keratin in these dead cells gives strength to the nail and makes it hard. But what is the use of these nails? Nails protect our fingertips. Moreover, by observing the condition of our nails, doctors can get clues about our overall <laughs> health. Why do our fingers get wrinkly? Because they want to look like raisins. <laughs> no. Huh? A popular research suggests that wrinkly oh. fingers are a reaction of our nervous system. Oh. When our fingers are in water for a long time, our nervous system causes uh -huh. the blood vessels present in the deeper layers of our skin to constrict. This in turn causes the deeper layers to shrink or contract. But as the topmost layer does not shrink, it becomes uh -huh. loose, thus forming small folds or wrinkles. But why does this happen? Scientists suggest that this could be an evolutionary adaptation. Wrinkly fingers help in getting a better grip to pick up wet objects, <laughs> preventing them from slipping from our hands. Even our feet get wrinkly, helping us to walk in water without slipping. <laughs>